I'm Chanda Cooper with the Richland County Conservation Division and the Richland Soil and Water Conservation District. Today I'm in the pollinator demonstration garden to learn from garden manager Ann Marie Johnson about the best types of plants to include in my own home landscape. In a previous episode of Watch and Learn, Anne Marie shared about the importance of using native plants, planting in masses or groups, and including plants that bloom at different times of year to provide season long habitat for pollinators. Today, her message is about flower diversity. Anne Marie, if someone wants to start a pollinator garden, how should they choose plants? When you're getting ready to plan your pollinator garden, the things you want to think about for flowers are the size, the shape, the color, and the variety in heights. That's important because our bees are big, small, some of our butterflies are different sizes, but also because those pollinators have different tongue lengths and you want them to be able to reach the nectar for their tongue length. On your little smaller flowers, like this Rudbeckia, the smaller bees are going to be here because it's easier to get their shorter tongue length in there. Deeper flowers like a penstemon or the partridge pea, those are the bigger bees are going to be going to that. So a good pollinator garden has season long blooming, things are in masses, it's easier for the pollinators to, to be able to feed, takes less resources, and then varying heights, shapes, colors and sizes. Pretty simple and then you've got a glorious garden to enjoy all season long. To make an analogy, when you plan a dinner party, you take into account the dietary preferences of your guests. Similarly, when you plant a buffet of flowers for pollinators, keep in mind that each type of pollinator has different dietary needs and different tongue lengths. The most successful pollinator gardens will cater to different sizes and types of pollinators by including flowers in a variety of shapes, sizes, colors, and heights. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for the next episode of Watch and Learn. Support for this project was provided by an Urban Agriculture Conservation Grant from the National Association of Conservation Districts. Some funding was provided by the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service.